this is gonna be a memory to take home. Yeah, that's moving over there. So the biggest factor in terms of the changes that we're seeing in the fire regime, particularly in the last two decades, I think is directly correlated to this change in surface air temperatures. And statistically, we find that changes in June and July temperatures are most directly correlated with the increase in cumulative area burned across the state of Alaska. I, I think it's like one and a half to four and a half degrees Fahrenheit increase in temperatures. Really significant. My name is Scott Rupp, and I'm a professor of forestry at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Now, compare the speed that the fire's going on that side with what's happening over here. And I can't really see what's happening behind there to know for sure, but just if you look at the direction of the smoke. If you tie that back to fire behavior, it's all about the fuels. We're standing in a bunch of fuel here. Temperature directly affects the moisture content of these fuels. So warmer temperatures are gonna reduce fuel moisture and make things a lot more readily burnable. Got all the air it needs, it's just moving with the wind. It's the first to hit the fuels, the, it's, it's drying the fuels ahead of its path. And we've had some really record large fire years in just this past 10 years, and they've been linked to years where not only are we having really warm temperatures, but very dry conditions with no very little precipitation. My name is Jennifer Barnes, and I'm the regional fire ecologist for the National Park Service. And we're here at Kramer's Field, which is in Fairbanks, Alaska. Some of these black spruce forests that had uh, burned really hot, and I probably have shown you those photos before where it was just completely down to mineral soil. From a research standpoint, I've been interested in trying to understand how fire, vegetation, and climate interact in the boreal forest. Spruce in there, all deciduous, basically. Is that the one out on the flats that was burning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that, that one going was, off pretty good? It was, because it was really windy. Yeah. We're walking through the boreal forest trail out here. There's a small prescribed fire that was done to enhance wildlife habitat and probably also to reduce some of the fuels. We're standing in a fairly mature birch stand. I bet you most of these trees are at least 100 years old. Getting to the point where this is starting to naturally fall apart. Behind us, what you can see is a prescribed fire that they did here primarily to promote habitat um, here on the wildlife refuge. And you've got prolific suckering and saplings coming into what used to be a, a mature stand like this. Um, so it really changes things. Recently uh, we've been seeing fires when it's very dry, fires burning into these forests in the middle of the summer, which is kind of unusual and probably part of this kind of drought and climate change that we're seeing. And springtime, yeah. And that's the, you know, like the last two years we've had extremely dry springs with some really hot temperatures and we've had a lot of fire activity much earlier than we're typically used to. And in those cases, actually, the fire is, tends to be more in these hardwood stands than in the black spruce, because the black spruce is still frozen, and a lot of times there's still snow. Snow on the ground, so, yeah. Um, so things can really flip-flop in the on the shoulder seasons, or in these extreme years, like 2004, which was the big record year. One of the most telling statistics, I think, is from 1970 to 2000, a 30-year period of time, we burned 20 million acres. From 2000 to 2010, in just a third of that time, we've burned an additional 20 million acres. So things really seem to be ramping up. And within that last decade of time, we've had, I think, three of the 10 biggest fire years on record. So things really seem to be changing in all aspects. Another observation we've been seeing in a lot of the scientists that do plot level work has been the, the change in the severity of these fires. So how much of these fuels that we're standing in are consumed in the fire, and that really changes what comes in after the fires. Uh, the more severe burning that we get really changes the, the vegetative dynamics.
A black spruce is really the, that's the fuel that burns. I mean, it's, it's really what carries fire throughout the boreal. And these sort of deciduous stands get touched by these larger fires in terms of, as their perimeters to these black spruce stands, they'll burn into a certain point, but they're not the major fuel. So I think the jury's still out in terms of really understanding how things are changing. But anecdotally, we're, we're seeing a lot of changes in recent years in terms of these early season fires where we're getting significant burning in deciduous stands. Mm. You know? Otherwise, this stands probably another 50 or 60 years away from seeing a regular fire in the summertime as this starts to break down and the canopy opens up and the spruce and the understory start to um, gain some dominance, then the fuels start to change more that are uh, more conducive to burning. Thank you.